2.1 million euros is the sum Puigdemont cabinet members will have to pay in the coming days, if they don't want to see their assets confiscated by the Spanish judiciary, that is. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Spain's Supreme Court is asking the prosecutor, former ministers and president for €150,000 bail each to be paid in the next two working days. Why? They're being prosecuted for misuse of public funds and the judge wants to make sure that they pay any potential fines. In our show today, we'll give you the latest on the Independence Court case, but we'll also travel to the US to see how Catalonia is doing as a guest of honour in a well-known cultural festival. The inquiry into the Catalan officials involved in the independence case is pretty much over. Two things we have learned is that the date of the trial is close to being announced and that the prisoners no longer need to be close to the court in Madrid to attend hearings. But today we learned something new. 2.13 million euros. This is what former president Carles Puigdemont and his ministers will have to pay if they don't want their assets to be confiscated. The deadline, two days. Accused of misuse of public funds, Spain's Supreme Court warns them to compensate the estimated cost of last October's referendum, a vote deemed illegal and the main reason for their prosecution. There are 14 politicians accused of misuse of funds, including Puigdemont and former Vice President Oriol Junqueras, the minister responsible for Catalan finances. Each of them will have to pay around 150,000 euros. So far, a solidarity fund set up by pro-independence grassroots groups has paid for most bail payments and judicial expenses. It is yet to be seen whether there is still enough money to cover new expenses. As the case against independence leaders moves to the trial phase, politicians jailed in Madrid will be transferred to prisons in Catalonia. This includes Junqueras and other ministers accused of rebellion. There are nine pro-independence leaders jailed in Madrid. In prison since last October, Activists Jordi Sánchez and Jordi Cuchard are the ones who've been in jail the longest. Just yesterday, Catalan Public TV broadcast a documentary that sheds light on a demonstration last September, the very protest for which they were sent to prison. Drawing on footage from members of the public, the documentary shows how the two activists tried to mediate with the Spanish police officers and called on citizens to remain peaceful. We also had some news today about the leaders being prosecuted in the same case who are abroad. Carlos Puigdemont will have to wait yet longer to learn his fate in Germany. The court in charge of his extradition case has informed EU authorities that it will take more than the regular 90-day limit given to decide on European arrest warrants. For Puigdemont's lawyers, Spain's judiciary is to blame for the delay. They claim the Supreme Court is still sending paperwork on the case past the deadline, and always in Spanish. Elsewhere in Europe, another exiled politician, Anna Gabriel, from the far-left Coup Party, was issued Swiss residence for five years. She is to start a PhD in Geneva and is not expected to attend trial in Spain to answer a charge of disobedience. Moving on, today we found out that there is a fairly positive outlook for Catalonia's economy this year and the next. GDP growth in the country for this year is now expected to be 2.9%, says the Economy Ministry. This outstrips the average growth expected in Spain and the Eurozone for 2018 to two and six decimal points respectively. As for unemployment, the government expects the jobless rate to fall to 9.7% by the end of 2019, which will be the first time in 11 years that the figure dips below 10%. Talking about jobs, trade union CCOO is concerned about the future of Codornio employees. Most of the Cava firm has been sold to American fund Carlyle, so after five centuries, Codornia will no longer be a family-owned business. This happened to the other major cava producer in the country, Freshenet, last March. This week we've been informing you on the Catalan president's visit to Washington. It's been an intense one, including a clash between Kim Torra and the Spanish ambassador to the US. But the original and main point of Torra's trip was to support Catalan culture. Catalonia is the guest of honour in the Smithsonian Festival in the US capital, Washington. Dozens of people working for the same goal, building a human tower of up to 10 floors of people showing coordination and strength. This is one of the most iconic symbols of the Catalan culture, 
Others include all about fire, such as the Diablas, people in devil dresses who make of this natural element a key part of another celebration. Sardanas, a folk dance, is another symbol of the country's identity, and all of them are taking place in the Smithsonian Culture Festival in Washington DC until July the 8th. So far, citizens of the US Capitol have already seen some of these devils getting ready to switch on the week. Washington's National Mall Park is these days also hosting parades, featuring traditional figures including the giants or the capgrossus with considerable hats, one of the top choices for children. All of these figures usually parade along with some musicians playing instruments such as trumpets, drum and other wind and percussion instruments. Storytelling in both Catalan and English have also been part of the performances at the festival so far. Other emblematic features of the country's identity have been present, for instance the Trancadís type of mosaic, typical of Antoni Gaudí and other Catalan modernist artists. The Catalan Minister for Culture said earlier this week that this is a magnificent opportunity for the sector to go international and organizations don't look to be wasting the opportunity. With Human Towers performing next week, members of some groups are already on the ground explaining what these unique constructions are all about. And as Catalan arts are performed in the US, some international art has landed in Catalonia. The Rio d'Art International Art Contest is taking over the streets of Ribaroja d'Ebre in the southernmost tip of the country. In the past two weeks, ten artists from six different nations have been transforming rundown public sites into a kind of outdoor museum. <laughs> Recovering part of the young talent that has left the village over the years is one of the aims of the contest. One of the artists taking part thinks the goal of the event go even further. I think it's just an opportunity for uh, artists from other countries to come here, make connections with local artists, um, to create works in the streets that are, is, that are accessible for the local people. And also, I do believe, I truly believe, that art has the power to improve people's self-esteem and improve people's quality of life. In fact, the contest in the Ebre area is one of our cultural suggestions for the weekend. Another one is the Vida Music Festival in Bilanovri La Geltru, but only as long as you have tickets as it's sold out. St. Vincent and Franz Ferdinand are performing today and Ein and Wine tomorrow, among others. The festival kicked off yesterday with the music of Curtis Harding, Calixico and Los Planetas. Enjoy and see you on Monday.